Hi everybody, I'm Jewel and today we are going to paint a starfish on the beach in alcohol ink. So it can be done, I usually do in two colors. I've got the orange one here and the purple one over here. And where I live, that's the color they are, really pretty purple. But today we're going to do this one. So I'm going to just set them out of the way. That one over there. And I'm using it, uh, a six inch ceramic tile. And I'm just gonna quickly use some isopropyl alcohol and give it a quick clean. Make sure there's no dust on here. So the first part is the water. So we're gonna start off with the water. And I've got aqua, cool, cloudy blue, and monsoon. Those are my favorite colors for doing a wave. So. Just getting the color right on there. Put your nozzle tip right on the tile. And I'm gonna, that's quite a dark color. I'm going to lighten up with a bit of pool and maybe even a bit of cloudy blue here. Let's see what that does. So once that's on, I'm going to open my blender here. I'm just going to take the blender and dip the tile to the side a bit get it right on let the colors blend together a little bit tip your tile now while it's still really wet i'm going to work it with my finger mm -hmm. and i'm just going to give it it's kind of a lazy s motion with my finger and uh, i do like to have variation in color so some a little dark some a little light and then while it's still down, using my compressed air, I'm going to follow that same motion with the straw. Now, you can keep working it. I'm not 100% loving that, but it's, it's coming. So maybe a little more of the lighter color here. A little more, let's see, a little more monsoon back here and maybe a little pool in the middle that's a pretty color too okay so again a little bit of blender going across let it spread out a bit on the tile and only while it's still nice and wet can you do this with your with your hand if it's too dry you're just going to have a lot of streaking and then i'll give it some air So I don't mind that. Make sure when it gets to the edge, you push it off. Because if it's too wet, it hits the edge and it wants to come back and then it dries, leaving a ridge. So that's not too bad. The next step is I'm going to take a clean paper towel and using just alcohol, I'm going to just make the border of where I want the water to end. So you can either do that by putting the alcohol right on the tile and cleaning it back like this, or you can put it on your finger and wipe back. But so like I said, kind of a lazy S sort of motion there. I might put a little bit of more color through there. Whoops, I got a spot. Okay. Just gonna Keep adding until I'm happy with it. When you get those spots, there's not much you can do except just go right through with it. There, I kind of like that. There. I think I'll be good with that. And before I move on to the sand, I'm going to bring in a little bit of just the foam, the, the white caps. A little bit of the splashing in the water so I'm going to do that by lifting off and I've got my tray here I'm just going to put a little bit of alcohol right in my tray and it's lifting off so I've, I've got the alcohol on the q-tip and I just want to get a little bit of happy waves coming up there I'm going to sound like Bob Ross my happy little waves but 
Oh, and I have Gloria here. She's my camera lady. So if she has any questions, she's going to ask away. There might be questions that you might be wondering about. So say hi, Gloria. <laughs> hi, Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> so Good job, Joel. She's a new student of mine. She's going to, and also a very good friend. So she's going to just do some commenting if she has any questions. And once you get both tips of the Q-tip wet with color, you got to go to a new one because you don't want to be just spreading color around. We want to be lifting off. So, so wherever in here you feel like you want to see a little bit of splash in the water, a little bit of waves. Don't have the Q-tips soaking wet because that's gonna could give you a disaster. And I usually make them a little thicker in the middle and maybe taper off a bit at the, at the end of it. Um, that's not too bad. I like this kind of clear part in here, but it's a little streaky right there. And I use the dollar store Q-tips just because they're a lot can, they're denser. They're not as fluffy, and so if you use the name brand, the big fluffy ones, they might leave fibers in your in your ink. So I use the cheaper ones, and they work better. And let's see, maybe a little bit over here. I can also do it with these uh, dental micro brushes if you want just a little smaller splashes here and there. They'll take off a lot less. But you want to lift off enough that you can really see the white of the tile coming through. And that gives it a nice contrast. Maybe a little bit over here. A bit there. And a little bit more up here. I didn't like that ridge that was coming, so I'll see if I can't make it kind of disappear. So I'm pretty happy with that for my water. Um, so next step is going to be the sand. So for my sand color, I've got caramel, latte, maybe a bit of mushroom, a bit of slate. I also have hazelnut. And these are all Ranger inks, by the way. So I'm going to start with caramel and I'm just going to dab it right onto my dabber like that. And just start dabbing away. Um, sometimes if there's too much ink on the dabber, I'll wick a little bit off so it's a little more speckly. Pull off a little bit and you get more texture and more smaller detail in the sand. So now I'm going to go with latte and again, let's see how blobby it is there. I want it to be more speckly, so wick some off. And newspaper is really absorbent, so newsprint. So that's uh, a good way to reduce some of the ink on your dabber. So I'm going to come right up to the water's edge there where the sand meets the water. Maybe I'll put a little hazelnut and go on the other end here. Tap some of that out. And just gives a little variation in the sand color. I also like slate. It's a, just a pale gray color, but I really like that color. So get a little bit of that in there. And you want to fill up all your Oh, your sand area. I think that hazelnut was a bit too pink, but that's okay. I can get rid of that. Let's see. Back to caramel, I think. No. Oh, over here. And you just want to get it looking as close as you can to sand. 
but there's lots of little pebbles and things on the beach too so and then, like I said right up into my water a little bit and there's a bit of a hard ridge there so to soften that up I'm just going to take my q-tip and I think uh, maybe I'll put a bit of cloudy blue on my tray and see if I can just break that edge up a bit and also just with um, with alcohol on my q-tip too because I still want to have a little bit of the white white water the white foam coming through just want to kind of get a nice transition from the ocean to the sand to want a hard line there there I think that looks good a little bit more There. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with my sand for now. So the next step is the star. And when I teach this in a class, I give everybody a template to trace out the star. Um, I'm pretty comfortable freehanding my star onto there, but not everybody can do that. So I'm going to just place that piece of plastic. I just So what I did was I just brought up some starfish images on my computer and I took a piece of plastic and taped it to the computer screen and then I was able to just take a fine tip felt pen and trace it and cut it out and that's my template. So just go on Google images or whatever and silhouette, starfish silhouettes and so I've got it placed so the tips are going to go into the water a little bit there. And it's okay to have some of them cut off. And I don't want it right center. I want it off to the side a little bit. So I'm going to take off my gloves because I really don't need them anymore. And I'm going to take a fine tip Micron art pen marker and just trace this out. So once I got it where I want it, I don't want it to move. So place my finger firmly in the center and then I can quickly you don't have to trace a hard line you could even just dots because you don't want too much black ink on there but just enough so you can see where your starfish is going to go and did I go up here oh, I moved it okay don't want to move it if you can help it little bit into there okay don't move okay I can see it well enough to see where it's going to be so and I just make these out of like pie, clear pie plate lids work really well and I, so I do that for a few things that I teach in my class. Now, we're going to remove the color in the middle of the starfish here. And so we're just lifting off ink. So for starters, for the middle, I can probably get away with just um, put the paper towel on my finger and a little bit of alcohol. And just to get a good head start here in the center lifting off but don't get too close to the edge because if this is too wet it's going to spread and then you're going to be going outside your outline I guess that doesn't work if you don't wrap it around your finger okay so that way a little bit through here there okay so the rest I'm going to do with a q-tip just grab yourself a few clean q-tips there 
and tap it on your paper towel. Oh, that end's got color, so that's no good. Um, tap it on your paper towel because you don't want it soaking wet when you're going right up to the edge. You can even give it a squeeze. And we're just going to clean all the ink off where that star was. A little more. Another clean one. And you can try to take some of that black ink off if you're able to. I wouldn't worry about it too, too much. This one looks a little skinny. I'm going to make him a little bit wider. Okay. He's still a little... I think this one's too fat, but I can always bring in some more sand there. So you don't have to worry about getting it 100% clean because we're going to put the orange, orange color on there, and that's just going to wipe out the... Oh, we got a hair in there too. There, that's good enough. It doesn't have to be snow white in there. I think this should come a little further out. There, that's better. Okay, so for filling in the foundation color, I'm going to go with this one, Ember. It's quite strong, but this is just the background color. So... I'm going to get daring and I'm just going to put some right on there. If you work fast, you can get it spread out before it, uh, it, you know, you want it to be dry before it hits the edge. But it's safer to put it on here. <laughs> so we're just filling in the background. So don't worry about lines and you just want to make sure you, you don't come too close to the edge there if it's really wet. Give it a quick blow if it does. But this is the part that's going underneath the texture because these starfish are really bumpy and crusty. Um, so this is just the underpainting. Okay, no questions, Gloria? <laughs> no, you're amazing me. <laughs> okay, so I'm not worried about all those lines because this, like I said, this is the underpainting, so now I'm going to show you how to get some of that bumpy texture. So that was ember, and now I've got sunset orange hair. And I'm going to just dot up and down with the orange myself a little puddle there so I'm just all those little lines don't worry about them because they're gonna they're all gonna be just taken out by this technique here so this one is a lighter orange so you're getting the two different colors on each other that looks pretty nice And don't worry if the edge gets a little bumpy because that's that's how they're they're made. You don't want to have a hard 
clean line there. You want to show the different, the texture of it against the sand. And where we see those little hard lines, you might have to push a little harder to get it through. But I'm painting pretty fast here, but because I'm used to pa painting fast, but you can slow down and take your time. Almost done. And you can see a little bit of the pen there, but that's okay. Okay, so that's not too bad. I think it needs to be a little bit wider over here, coming in this way. And if things do spread too much for you, just I just get in there and give it a quick blow. There. Okay. So that's my star. Now I'm going to, as you can see on this one, just the, each leg of the star, each appendage sort of comes up in a bit of a triangle shape. And then, so I'm just going to mark in a little bit there where the light hits the edge. So for that, I'm using these uh, dental tools and I'm just going to be lifting ink off. So a little bit of alcohol. Always use alcohol when I'm lifting off. I think this one has a finer tip. So um, once that's wet, tap it on my newsprint because I don't want big blobs of alcohol in here. So I'm not drawing a hard line or anything. I'm just just lifting off a little bit in the center. And I'm so I'm coming up to the widest part of the I guess it's a leg, I don't know, <laughs> um, arm. I'm coming up to the widest part and stopping. So when I get all five done, then I'll join them together. There. Okay, that was a little too much there. I'll have to bring, the, bring some orange back and some of these. But when I get to the center, I'm just going to kind of join them together in, a, in between. So it makes a bit of a five-sided uh, shape there, a little pentagon. And, yeah, I'm going to bring back a little bit of orange just in a few spots there where I took a bit too much white off. And over there. Don't want too, too much white, so push some of that orange back in. So that's my star. And now I want to bring in some shadow side on the sides. So let's see, I'll just copy what I've got over here. So. I'm going to do that with the same dental stick here. Um, I'm going to mix up a little bit darker color. So I've got some orange in here. I'm going to add a bit of rust and uh, maybe a little bit of, I have sepia. It's kind of a brown, dark brown color. There. So I'm just mixing up. A darker. I just want it to be a little bit darker than what what I've got on here, so you can see a shadow. And 
I'm just going to drop some in. If it's not dark enough, I can add more sepia. If it's too dark, I can lighten it up with orange. But, uh, yeah, so I'm just, I start out with just tapping it in. And when I'm at the tip of the arm here, as I come forward to the center, I'm going a little bit wider. Like that. And then the next shadow is going to be down. The, the light is coming from this way. So the next shadow is going to be over here. And I need a little more sepia there. And maybe a little bit of this latte. Mix that up. And so, again, it's wider the center of the body, and as I go out, I just taper it down a bit. And it's it because it's on a very textured surface there. It doesn't have to be painted smooth. It can be just speckled and bumpy. Like that. And then the next one will be over here this way. And same thing. And a wee bit on this side. And that's just going to really give it a lot more depth and shape. It's a little bit drying up there, so just a drop of alcohol will re-wet everything. And uh, so, not too bad. There. So now I'm going to give some shadow to the sand. The, cat, the starfish is casting a bit of a shadow into the sand. So it's just going to be these three sections right here. And let's see. Um, maybe a little bit of mushroom. I'm just kind of winging it. Just uh, playing around and I... I don't always have a particular color planned. I just mix it up and see what what I can get here. So maybe it needs a little more a little more caramel. Where's my caramel? There it is. I think I got a bit of orange in there, which I really didn't want. So I might have to flip this over, paint it on the other side. Okay. little bit of shadow there, a little bit over here. Oh, there's a hair in my... Yeah. Okay, and I had said mushroom too. So... There. This gives a little more depth to the painting. A little bit in here. There we go. Now, anywhere else in the in the sand, if you want to just bring in a little more color, or a different color, I guess. Maybe I'll put a little bit of that mushroom. I got a little bit of slate there. So I'm going to stamp it on here so it's just speckles. I don't want big blobs of color. Let's see what that does. Okay. Pretty happy with that. So I also want to bring the water coming over the tip of the the starfish 
arms here and legs. Um, so that again, that's just removing ink. Uh, I'll flip this over, it's clean on this side. And a little bit of alcohol on my Q-tip. And so here I'm going to be lifting off the orange, so i got to be really careful that I don't spread that orange color around. I don't want the water to be orange. So, just like that. And so I'm coming from the outside in, so when I lift off it's not pulling the orange out. Um, and always keep keep cleaning or using new clean ones. If it's dirty, put it aside and get a clean one because then you're just spreading ink around. A little bit over here too, I think. A bit of a wave coming across there. And you can see I'm spreading the orange a bit. I have to be really careful. Oh, it's a dirty one. <laughs> anyway. There we go. There. And that's just going to ground the whole scene a little bit more. The starfish isn't just floating on top of everything. He's got some shadows and some water there. So he's looks like he's actually in the water. I'll take a little bit more there. Yeah. Now it's a wee bit orange. I'm going to have to work on that a little bit. But, oh, one more thing. So in the center, I'm just going to put up a little bit of a highlight. Remove that part. Okay, so it's just a, like a little bit of a star lifted off right in the center here. It goes to, towards each each like that. There. So I think that's pretty much done. Um, you can always go back. Maybe I'll go into, back into the water here and just lift off a little bit more of the blue. Maybe I'll have a... There's already some white there. Lift off a little bit there cut through that line. I don't like that hard line, so if I cut through that, it'll break it up a bit. And a little bit up here. Okay. I'm going to break this up a wee bit in here. There. And then take my little micro pen and sign my name. Oh, that's brown. I want the black one. Where the black one? Oh, there it is. Okay. Sign my name. And oh, I was going to say if you want, you could take the fine black pen here and give it a little bit of an outline just to help it stand out a bit if it if it if you think it needs it. But uh, I think we're good. I'll just turn that around so you can have a look. Yeah, there you go. You can put it this way. Um, yeah, I prefer it to, to be this way. I mean, you could have it that way too if you like. But um, there you are. Lazy starfish on the beach. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.